Mankind has been communicating visually since the beginning of recorded history. Fast forward to a recent Sunday at the George Memorial Library in Richmond, where graphic authors were on hand to speak to audiences about visual storytelling. Fallon Cook is the author and illustrator of fact-based books for kids. She showed how to create art in the new digital world. Nowadays, people are just learning to do it totally digital, so uh, I never, I don't think it ever hurts to learn how to do it by hand because then you can't erase it and delete it every single time. Sometimes you just need like a solid end to your drawing where you can't butts with it. Dave Roman also writes and draws books for kids. He urged them to write about what they love and overcome any obstacles with imagination. I've never really been good at drawing cars, so I decided that in the future, kids drive dinosaurs. <laughs> because I love drawing dinosaurs. The third author was Rue Zhu, who now makes Houston her home. She encouraged future authors to pay attention in history class. Newsprints was a culmination of a lot of things that I enjoyed in middle school, such as um, history, um, historical fiction, and also, you know, cool girls who, you know, didn't let society tell them what to do. Comics have come a long way from books about superheroes for kids to graphic novels for adults. In the 1950s, comics were almost banned as bad influences on children. These authors would insist that talking about comics in a library now is wholly appropriate since they get kids interested in reading. For kids with short attention spans, I think comic books are really great because a big, thick book can seem sort of daunting. Um, but it's so fast to go through a comic. I actually have a lot of trouble of, uh, you know, taking my time with a comic because you can just burn through it so fast. Um, but I think that's good for some kids because some kids have short attention spans, some kids have like ADHD and things like that, and so to have uh, sort of a story that they can finish front to back. I've been really honored that I've gone to schools and done a presentation and kids will raise their hand and ask questions um, and they seem really excited and they're really, you know, eloquent in the way they speak, but then afterwards I'll hear from the teachers that that kid barely ever asks questions and never really speaks up. So something about being exposed to art and stories together kind of unlock something for a lot of us. If I can make a connection with a kid who feels like he's alone and maybe there's no one else who sees the world that they do and then they read a book that makes them feel a little less alone, then I've done my job. Um, I just wanted to sort of, you know, also contribute to the conversation by showing that uh, there's all sorts of different um, stories you can have with comics. Some can be wacky, goofy, slapstick. Some can be more serious. And, you know, both, both sides and the spectrum in between. Um, they can be for both kids, adults, you know, just anyone. All three authors shared some of their work processes for the audience. The message to them was this. You can not only read comics, you can make your own. You don't have to be the best artist. And even if you're going to draw with stick figures, you know, or just like really crude lines. It's like, it's just about getting, it's about sharing those ideas with the world and making those connections with other people. It takes all kinds of books to fill the Fort Bend libraries. And there are all kinds of people who benefit from those books. When I was a kid, um, I would hang out at the library. I always felt that the library was a, a safe place for me. I mean, I was a kid who was a little uh, asthmatic. I wasn't into sports. Um, so reading really was the thing that uh, allowed me to explore and be creative. I think about the people who recommended different books to me that changed my life and made me want to be an artist or made me think about the world differently. Um, so I love to sort of pass that on and sort of inspire the next generation. Some of these kids in the audience might become authors of books in this very library. To be continued. For Stafford Magazine, I'm John Woods.